One of the cores of my portfolio is having a total stock market index fund in that portfolio. And today we are gonna be doing a showdown between Vanguard's two top dogs, VTSAX versus the ETF, which is VTI. So the first question is, what is VTI and what is VTSAX? So we will start with VTI. VTI is Vanguard's total stock market index ETF. And what this index tracks is the entire US stock market. So you're owning thousands and thousands of different companies by investing in VTI. But this is an ETF, so it trades like a stock instead of trading like a mutual fund. Whereas VTSAX is an index fund. So VTSAX trades more so like a mutual fund fund. What does that mean? That means at the end of each trading day is when you can buy something like VTSAX. Whereas with VTI, you can trade just like a stock. So you can buy it in and out throughout the day when the market is open. So there are some similarities and there are some differences between VTSAX and VTI. So first, let's look at the similarities. So the first similarity is the objective, meaning both of these funds look to track the US total stock market index. And so because they track the same exact index, the holdings are going to be very very, very similar between the two of them. In fact, they are trying to get the same exact performance between these two funds. The second similarity is management style. These are both passively managed index funds and ETFs. So the management style is not gonna be very active. Instead, they are just trying to mirror the total stock market index. And then lastly is diversification. These are both very well diversified funds. And so both of these have extreme diversification because they own the entire US equity market. Now, the only difference is main mainly lie in the structure of the fund. So let's look at some of these differences. The first one obviously is investment structure. So VTSAX is a index fund, which mirrors like a mutual fund, whereas VTI is the ETF version or the exchange traded fund version. The second difference is the minimum investment. So VTSAX traditionally has a $3,000 minimum investment, whereas VTI, you can get in with as much as you want, as long as you buy one share, whatever the current price is. Then another difference is what we just talked about is trading. So VTI trades like a stock stock does where you can buy it day in and day out because it's an ETF and VTSAX trades like a mutual fund. So you can only buy it at the end of the day. So VTI is much more flexible and accessible in that way. And the last thing is fractional shares. So if you're interested in fractional shares, it is much easier to get fractional shares of an index fund right now than it is of an ETF. Now there are some brokerages that have opened up that allow you to get fractional shares of ETFs. And I'm sure in the near future, this is going to be much easier going forward. But right now it is a little bit easier to get fractional fractional shares in something like VTSAX, but VTI is cheap enough where you can just save up a couple months if you can't afford one share per month and allow yourself to still buy in to VTI. Now let's look at the key metrics between the two of them. We'll do a full on comparison. So the first thing I want to look at is assets under management. So the assets under management between these two is actually very, very similar. $283.1 billion is the assets under management across both funds, as you can see here. Then we have expense ratio. So this is one that may tip people to one direction because it is 0.01% differential between these two. So VTI, very, very low expense ratio at 0.03% expense ratio. And VTSAX, also very, very low expense ratio at 0.04%. And if you look at the returns over the course of the last couple of years, and we'll look at them deeper here in a second, you can see the returns are almost spot on. So when you look at VTSAX returns, we can look at 6.84% as the month end here. That doesn't really matter. You don't really ever want to look at short-term returns. Instead, you want to look at the longer term returns, five years, 10 years, and even longer, depending on what fund you're looking at. So year to date at the time recording, this doesn't matter, but 16.17% over the course of the last five years, 11.3%. And over the course of the last 10 years, 12.28%. And then since inception, you will see that VTSAX is a little bit lower than VTI will be at 7.69%. But the only reason for that is these funds started eight years apart. So depending on what market factors were happening during that time frame, these funds started eight years apart. So you don't want to worry about since inception between these two funds, they will always have different returns since inception if they started on different dates. Now, the second one is obviously VTI. Now, when we're looking at VTI here, what we're looking at is the returns over the course of the last year, 18.91%, almost exactly the same as VTSAX. Over the course of the last three years, 13.75%, which is exactly the same as VTSAX. Over the last five years, 11.30%, which is exactly the same as VTSAX. And over the last 10 years, 12.29% and VTSAX 
VTSAX was 12.28%, almost exactly the same as VTSAX. And you can see since inception there, 8.07%. This fund started in 2001. Now, when you look at these, it says here on VTSAX that that fund started in 2000. That is actually not true. It started back in 19. 93. Now let's look at the top 10 holdings for each of these funds to see if it's any different. Well, it's not. So if we look at the top 10 holdings for both these funds, it is exactly the same. So you have the ticker symbol for Apple and Apple is the number one holding. Then you have Microsoft, then you have Amazon, then you have Nvidia, then you have Google, then we have Tesla, we have Meta, we have Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company and Charlie Munger's company. Then we have Google and we have United Healthcare Group. So all great, fantastic companies are the top 10 holdings here. These are also major S&P 500 holdings and they hold a heavy weight when it comes to these two funds. So what is the verdict between VTSAX and VTI? Which one do I like more? So it depends on if you like index funds or ETFs more. In this scenario, I honestly buy more VTI now than I do VTSAX. I've owned VTSAX SAX much, much longer than VTI, but I buy a lot more VTI now because I can trade in and out like a stock. It is much easier to buy. And one key thing to note is with VTI, you can buy it at any major brokerage without additional fees. If you are not at Vanguard and you try to buy VTSAX, a lot of brokerages like Fidelity or Charles Schwab will charge you an additional fee to buy that index fund. It's typically pretty pricey. It's around 25 bucks, which can be expensive depending on how much you are buying into that index fund. So in those scenarios, if you're at a different brokerage, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, N1 Finance, then look at VTI because I think VTI would be the better option for that scenario. But if you're at Vanguard, VTSAX is a fantastic index fund. It is in my top two favorite index funds at Vanguard, and it is one that you can solely own alone if you want to. Now, how do you plug VTSAX or VTI into a portfolio? A number of different ways. Number one, you can look at like a differentiated version of the Warren Buffett portfolio where Warren Buffett owns 90% in the S&P 500. Well, you can change that 90% percent to a total stock market index fund and then 10 percent in bond funds or you can allocate it into a three fund portfolio where your stock portion of a three fund portfolio is going to be vtsax then you can have an international fund and you can have a bond fund and allocate those percentages based on your risk tolerance so there's a number of different ways that you can plug this into your portfolio or the simple path to wealth portfolio and this is from the book that jl collins wrote called the simple path to wealth and what he argues in that book is that you can just own vtsax and nothing else because you own every single single stock in the stock market. So you're already extremely well diversified. Those companies work internationally. So you have a ton of international exposure. And this is going to allow you to build wealth over time with just one fund and not have to worry about it ever again. Great argument. I think there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the route you want to go with based on your risk tolerance, you can do some research and see if that works for you. But there's a bunch of different portfolios that you can plug this into to make it work. So for me, I'm buying a lot more VTI now, but I own both of these funds and they both have the same exact returns because they are trying to track the same exact index and they're trying to get the same returns. So this is something where it comes down to your personal preference. Do you like index funds? Do you like ETFs? Tell me which one you like down in the comments below. Listen, I hope you guys learned a ton about VTSAX and VTI. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. I'll answer every single one of them. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. And thank you so much for watching this video and investing in yourself. And we will see you on the next video.